Good evening and welcome to The Strand. I'm Christina Foxley, the Director of Events. I'm so pleased to welcome Adrian Tomina and Leanne Shafton here tonight to celebrate Adrian's new book, Scenes from an Impending Marriage, a Prenuptial Memoir. Best known for his cover illustrations for The New Yorker and for the critically acclaimed graphic novel Shortcomings, Adrian Tomina now opens the pages of his private sketchbook to reveal a witty, intimate account of the heady months prior to getting married. Through a series of comic vignettes, Tomina captures the amusing, taxing, and often absurd process of planning a wedding, as well as the peculiar characters and situations that he and his fiance encounter along the way. Adrian Tomina is the author of Shortcomings, Summer Blonde, Sleepwalk, and 32 Stories. Here, he is a New Yorker contributor, a Strand tote bag designer, a Strand tote bag design contest judge, and all around <laughs> awesome guy. <laughs> Joining Adrian tonight is Leanne Shapton. Leanne is an illustrator, publisher, and author of The Native Trees of Canada, published recently by Drawn and Quarterly. Was She Pretty? An Important Artifacts and Personal Property from the Collection of Lenora Doolin and Harold Morris, including books, street fashion, and jewelry, for which we hosted an incredibly unique event in our rear book room a few years ago. Following their discussion, Adrian and Leanne will take your questions. I'll be walking around with this microphone, so please wait for that before you speak. And then they'll stick around to sign copies of their books for you, which you can purchase downstairs on your way out of the store. Please join me in welcoming two gifted artists whom I should, would certainly hire to defend my wedding, Adrian Tomina and Leanne Shapton. <laughs> So I think you're all familiar with Adrian's work. Um, I first, I bought my first optic nerve in, and it was number six, uh, in 1996 at the Big Island Bookstore in Toronto, and um, completely worshipped it, and I think everyone's probably had that first encounter with Adrian's work moment. Um, it was, I was looking at a lot of Maurice Velikoop and Seth and Canadian illustrators at the time, and it was from a different planet. It was the different planet was probably the West Coast or something. But, um, and I was trying today to think about what that was like then, and it was sort of like when you're in elementary school and you meet someone from the gifted program mixed with trying some food or listening to some music that you know is meant for you. And so this this mix of sort of awe and arrival, and also realizing your loneliness is really boring but bottomless <laughs> in, in a good way. Um, I followed his work since then and as an art director I always wanted to work with him and he always declined. Um, but and, and again all my awe and admiration of him just grew because of that of course. Um, and then in December of last year I found myself in the slightly humiliating position of, of signing books next to him in the line snaking out side at the Brooklyn um, Comic uh, Fair was all for Adrian, so I had plenty of time <laughs> to read, without interruption, scenes from an impending marriage. And I, um, I'm not a laugh out loud person at all, I don't laugh out loud in the movies, or, and I think I was just sitting next to Adrian and I was hooting and, and, um, and snorting and making all of this noise because um, my own wedding was in two weeks time and there was all of this material that was absolutely true, absolutely hysterical and, um, and I totally loved it. Um, First of all, congratulations on your wedding too. That happened since I last saw you. Yeah, thanks. It's it's <laughs> bloody stuff getting this, getting um, getting a marriage organized in, or a wedding organized. I mean, the marriage part is something different, but the wedding stuff is is uh, so complicated. Nerves are exposed. You really, you really. There's the stock taking of your friends, which was interesting. It's not, it's really ugly. It's sort of, you know, all in the first chapter, there's all of these crossed out names, and you realize sort of where friends stand in this funny hierarchy. And, um, okay, so my first question, um, okay, well, I, I just made some notes. So, publishing something this autobiographical and personal is probably. Or do you agree that it's a little like what you have to do to get married? Not only do you give yourself away, you declare your love in front of everyone you know, and you give yourself up to other people's versions of you. Um, I was really touched by 
how funny the book is, and how, and I was really impressed by um, how you flung aside your usual subject matter and waded right in and done something this celebratory and loving, and I think it's brave. Um, sort of the way of getting married is brave. Well, it wasn't. Um, this, this book wasn't originally meant to be published in any way, so I think that's why it was so um, uh, just kind of uh, free and easy and, and drawn in a much looser way. And um, I think it was. It ended up uh, the idea that I wasn't going to publish it at all ended up really freeing me up, and not just in terms of the subject matter you're talking about, but also just in my working <laughs> methods. And it was a real uh, return to the way I started drawing comics when I was <clears throat> uh, like a teenager, where I was thinking that I was doing it just for you know, maybe a handful of people that I was going to share it with, and, and beyond that, that was, no one was going to see it. Um, so I think if there's any sort of uh, uninhibited quality to it, it's because I, I had no idea that I was going to end up exposing my, <laughs> myself in this way uh, you know, a few years later on. It made me wonder what, these were, these were party favors then. Right, yeah, yeah not, not quite as lavishly produced. Were they, they stapled? Like yeah, they were like little yeah. mini comics that, um, Friends and family ran off at their office Xerox machines. Yeah, they were beautiful. All they put it together. Yeah. And did it end at, at where the epilogue is, or, uh, or did you add? Yeah, I, I've added some to it since since then. Obviously, the whole epilogue was added after the fact, and um, I, I just added pages over the over time too. It was sort of um, for no for no good reason um, when I just had a spare minute. Um, like if I was waiting to hear back from an art director, or if I was trying to, um, if I was, I'm, I'm concurrently working on a on a different book that's a little more um, uh, <laughs> problematic for me. So if I'm stuck on that, I would I would pull out that sketchbook and just think back on some other memory and add on to that. So there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that's been added since the, the original version of it. Mm -hmm. And I was interested to hear if there were any stories that didn't make it in because they were so bloody. And... Yeah, well, I was saying that I think pretty much everything in this book is a little bit of the, um, the, the sugar-coated version <laughs> of the reality, um, especially since it was intended to be given out at the wedding to our, our friends and family. I didn't want to go into great detail about some argument that my wife and I had had about some inane thing, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, everything in there is basically true and did happen, but there's a lot of stuff that it is omitted. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever experienced, I mean, there's always, there's also always <clears throat> these moments at weddings where some family member or friend sort of derails something, and in this, it All kinds of stuff. Oh, so. yeah. Anything like that at yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I did my mer uh, wedding in a completely different way. I sort of tried to avoid the, the big clashes of the families and everything and, and was far more controlling about it and sort of planned four parties instead of one, and now I'm exhausted and there's embarrassing things happening at four instead of Are one. You, and you're not done yet. Either. And I'm not done it's yet. Still, still ongoing. I have to go to London for one. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's always, there's always some 
crazy yeah. thing you can't control. And I think that's also that's also just part of the the thing about embracing someone else's life. Yeah, we were expecting but, much much more excitement at our wedding, and we were sort of disappointed. <laughs> we, we we thought there had to be at least one fist fight, and it, did, it didn't occur. So fights. Um, <laughs> So my favorite term that came out of the book was this term, um, nuptial narcissism, which mm-hmm. I think should just be the, in the OED. Um, were you, were you surprised at the, I mean, I was speaking from my own experience, i um, surprised at the conventions I embraced when we decided to get married. Um, were you, and which ones do you think you could have dropped? I know that's a two part question. What? But. Which conventions could we have dropped? Or did you not, did you go, oh, that just sure wasn't me? Oh, um, most of it I felt that way about. <laughs> I mean, um, a lot of it I just didn't even know about going into this process. Um, Wedding socks. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, all that stuff. I, I had no idea what, what I was what I was in for. I didn't know that there was supposed to be a wedding favor. That I mean, that's how this book came about, because uh, Sarah sprung the idea on me, and um, I, to me it was like, uh, I was appalled at the idea that we had to spend more money to give something to people, people. after after all the the food and wine and all this stuff. But um, I guess you know it's some tradition that I didn't know about, and um, uh, I guess that's it's. I, I was just telling someone that I felt like it's one of those situations where you kind of. Uh, backed into a corner for having uh, some drawing ability, you know, like mm. it's like like now if I send someone a Hallmark card for their birthday, it's like a slap in the face or something, oh, yeah. and so yeah. um, it, it means they've been seriously demoted. But uh, listed. This was um, one of those things where I, it seemed like, oh, we can put you to work on this, and I've, you know, I, it's basically like I show in the book that I really didn't, I, I objected to the idea, and then. Um, uh, Sarah very craftily started showing me all these websites of these garish like chocolate bars with your photo realistic face embossed into it and um, so that's how she kind of kind of kind of tricked me into getting started this could be a chocolate bar yeah um, but then I got carried away I don't think she meant for it to be a whole book but I got sort of as with everything else you get a little obsessed it's so good it's so good oh, um, and then how did it get from party favor to drawn and quarterly um well uh, I guess, I guess the first thing that got the idea planted in my mind was when a copy showed up on eBay, and I started thinking, "Oh, okay, Mom. so it's, it's it, yeah." <laughs> well, I, I thought, okay, it's out. It's sort of out there anyway, and I mean, to be to be honest, I was saying, "There's all these people bidding on much? it." Yeah, I know. What did it go for? Well, it's 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 a whole sordid story, okay. but. Um, yeah, uh, like so, so. that sort of planted the idea in my mind, um, and then, at, like I said, I was sort of adding pages just for no reason over the last couple of years to it, and then eventually I realized I had about sixty pages, and um, I guess I, I don't know exactly how it came up, but I just mentioned the, to my publisher that I had this material, and if he had said, "Oh, well, good for you," then then I would have just left it at that. But he he seemed very interested in the idea of putting it out as a book, um, and. Um, uh, I guess I think the other thing that helped me kind of make that decision was that um, when I finished my previous book, which is called Shortcomings, I remember like really making a mental note to myself that whatever I had no idea what I was going to do next, but I said like whatever book of mine that comes out next, it has to be really different mm. from Shortcomings because I think everybody and myself included had kind of had their fill of that, <laughs> and I, I was sick of working in that way, and I think people. Um, who had, you know, very nicely followed my work over the years, were looking for for a, a break too, and so um, it sort of occurred to me that there's there's not much. I couldn't think of a more different book actually than, yeah. than this thing that had sort of been just building up uh, in my sketchbook. Did it make you want to do more work like it? Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's kind of the kind of work that I, I tend to just do in my sketchbook anyway. So, um, mm. but. Um, yeah, it was. It was like I said. It was fun for me, and um, it was. I think it was. You know, I, I. I don't really think of it as like the the follow up to that book. It's not like it shouldn't be filed under a graphic novel or anything like that. But uh, it, it was useful for me in terms of just kind of getting a fresh start and and.